Okay, I'm Steve Mays from Soulwise, and what I'd like to do here is a quick uh, GUI, uh, go through the GUI and the quick setup of the Ingenious EWS 300 access point. So the uh, EWS 300 is an indoor access point, 2.4 gig, 11 and 300 meg, and it can be used either as a standalone access point or part of the uh, Ingenious Neutral Management Solution. Um, though I must admit, we are finding that we tend, tend to sell more of them now as standalone access points purely because at the price, they're a very good high specification access point. Uh, gig LAN ports and supporting full K&R roaming, which is extremely unusual at access points at this price range and has full uh, sets of uh, nice sexy functions like multiple SSIDs and VLAN tagging and all that sort of thing. So they're a good standalone access point as well as being able to use through the Neutron solution. So let's go. Uh, so by default, it should be on the address 1.1. Uh, I say by default should be on address uh, 192.168.1.1 because we have had people uh, reporting that some of them are actually coming from ingenious setup on DHCP. I haven't analyzed that to find that if that's a firmware thing or not, but if it doesn't appear on 1.1, word of warning, it might be set up for DHCP. Uh, so anyway, let's log into the unit on the default admin admin. No, I don't want to save that. So the first thing that comes up is uh, device status, which gives you things like uh, the IP uh, address settings and uh, the basic status of the eight individual SSIDs and the Wi-Fi channel is on. Then you've got some statistics of traffic in and out on the LAN port and on the Wi-Fi interface. So as far as configuration is concerned, first thing you probably want to do is go to the basic, which basically uh, or essentially tells you uh, just what IP settings to use. Uh, so uh, by default, it should be on 1.1, but you could change it to DHCP if you want. Um, if using obviously a static address, just make sure it's an IP address which suits your network and which you will remember. So let's go to wireless setup next. Wait a few seconds for it to bring up that page. There we go. So the first thing you probably want to do is select the country. So we go down here and we've got you three United Kingdoms. One is uh, plain and then you've got B and C. B and C are five gig bands, so forget about them. So just select plain United Kingdom. Uh, go further down. You've got operational mode. Well, it only supports access point mode, so no point uh, playing around with that. Next thing is this green mode. Green ticked means um, the RF power is uh, fixed and limited to the maximum RF power pertinent to the region you're using it in. So normally, obviously, you'd need that tick. But if you want to untick it, you notice that the transmit power now has uh, gone adjustable. And you can see that you can crank it right up to a ridiculously illegal 29 dBm. Waste of time, in my opinion. Don't bother with it. Just leave it on green. Uh, do you want to use uh, 20 or 40 meg wide channels? Well, if you're using BG and N, you're probably better to select 20 slash 40. And you need 40 meg wide channels to get the maximum throughput on the 300 meg 11N. Uh, what else we got? We've got the client count limit. I say this device does, like most ingenious access points, does have a very good client count capability. Um, I suppose uh, realistically, though it does depend upon the sort of traffic that the clients are using, um, I suppose you'd be thinking around about between potentially 30 and 50 client ca uh, capability. But it does depend on what they're doing. Um, if you've got a room full of clients and all they're doing is uh, downloading ripoff DVDs all day long, then obviously that's a lot more work on the access point. So you might need to uh, set a lower client. Uh, for what people normally do nowadays, which is just checking the official Facebook posting and that sort of rubbish, then you can get away with a much higher client count. Uh, right, so let's go down here to the SSIDs. So I say it has eight individual SSIDs, all with individually selectable security and isolation options. So let's just click on uh, the first one, which is the only one that's enabled by default. And um, under here, let's just make this a bit bigger so we can see what's going on. Uh, I've got the full range of various security options. It supports uh, radius operation, uh, radius accounting operation, and which 
not many people will be interested in but for, more importantly go down to here we've got fast roaming so this enables the KNR roaming which by default is disabled not quite sure why it's disabled by default um, but you probably want to enable that to facilitate KNR fast roaming uh, normal let's do that now oh, no, we can't do that because we haven't put any security on All right. I won't worry about that now uh, access control filter list uh, that's enabling or disabling specific MAC addresses for uh, connectivity and you've got traffic shaving per SSID <clears throat> so we can actually limit the download and upload limit uh, aggregated on this specific SSID uh, so that's the functions you can do on each SSID and I say you've got eight individual SSIDs all which are custom configurable uh, and at bottom you've got um, guest network capability so if you enable guest network capability what you're doing is you're facilitating a Wi-Fi router setup on the access point so the access point will also pretend to be a Wi-Fi router for guest clients um, it's good doing it that way because that way it uh, gives you a very high degree of security and isolation between the guests and the main network so when you configure the guest network you've got uh, just click on that for example show you what you do you've got the normal security setup you want to do uh, and you can do radius accounting on the guest network as well so we'll close that down and here's the IP settings that you want it to use for the Wi-Fi router configuration so if you had a bunch of these access points let's say you had two or three of these access points each with a guest network then each access point is its own private individual Wi-Fi router uh, now the only thing that does mean is that although it gives you a very high degree of uh, client isolation and uh, client security it does mean that there's no roaming between a guest from one access point uh, guest network on one access point to the guest network on another access point because that's like going through a router to another router and coming back out again uh, and at the bottom we've got fast handover what that basically means is you can set a minimum permitted client signal strength so if you enable that um, and let's say it's on the default minus 70 what that means is if it detects a client where the signal drops below minus 70 the access point will kick the client off that will then force the client to have a look around and hopefully if you've laid out your network correctly it'll find another access point with a better signal for it to connect to um, fast handover really is to be discouraged because the process of kicking the client into the big bad world on its own uh, with its bum in the wind so to speak means that um, all uh, pretense of roaming has been uh, disabled because obviously the client might be halfway through doing something and the first thing it knows is oh whoa I can't access the access point what's going on here so it does make a cobblers of any roaming but um, some products out there um, have an issue where they are very sticky with their uh, handover what it means is if they connect to an access point even when there's another one closer with a better signal they still have a tendency to stick to the first one so using this function does mean that you can um, do something to alleviate that stickiness of the client connections um, I, some um, some client devices are better at coping with uh, with handing over from one access point to another than others uh, now Android products for example with Android products you can actually there's a number of apps that you can download which will actually um, smooth over automatically the client hopping from one access point to another by that I mean saying oh this signal is weak I'm going to hop over to the next one so that's a better way it's better to get the client to do it than for the access point to force it so if the client is capable of doing that smooth transition uh, then that's better rather than actually enabling this function and making the access point just brutally kick the client off um, Mac and Mac products Apple products do seem to be uh, particularly stubborn at sticking to things um, and not automatically going over to the best access point anyway that's the uh, that's the wireless settings um, so what we'll do we'll we'll apply these settings because there we go so they're now being saved so the settings that we've changed now as far as I can remember all we've changed is the 
country code have now actually been saved into the device. Now I did that intentionally so you can see that this changes box up there. I don't know if you noticed before, but it was set to zero. It's now set to four. Now um, this button at the bottom means save the settings. It doesn't mean apply the settings. This button up here is saying that there are four changes that have been done or saved, but they haven't been applied. So you can actually build up a whole series of saves, of saves to the configuration. At the end, you can actually do a block application to the whole lot. Just speeds up the process when you've got lots of different parameters to configure. You don't have to sit there after each um, change waiting for the device to apply them before you can continue. So um, what you would normally do is you click on changes and it says, right, what do you want to do? Do you want to apply the saves that you've done or do you just want to undo everything that you've done since the last apply? Uh, I won't bother going through that because we just have to sit here for about two minutes while the thing reboots. So let's continue going down through these web, web pages. So we've got advanced. Uh, so this can actually be used with a, with a neutral controller. Um, normally you'd leave it to auto detection if you're going to go that route. Uh, but you could actually specify uh, an IP address if you wanted for the controller, uh, SNMP settings for it, and various CLI SSH settings. And at the bottom, you've actually got the capability to set up an email alert um, if something awry goes wrong or um, client connection statistics and that sort of thing. But won't bother setting those up. Time zone, well, that's either either quite obvious. It just enables you to set the time on the device. You've got Wi-Fi scheduler, so you can do auto reboot timed events, um, but also uh, rather usefully, you can actually turn off and uh, disable specific SSIDs at certain times of day. Uh, so, for example, you may want to turn off um, particular Wi-Fi SSIDs set up um, out of hours or something like that. So you can actually do that through this bottom thing, bottom option, sorry. Uh, tools, usual sort of ping, test and trace routes, uh, system manager, you can change the login details for administration, uh, screen where you can do backup and save settings and also uh, do firmware updates. And the final one is the usual uh, logging of what's going on in the, in the device. So as you can see, it's got quite a few functions on it and it is uh, a very well specced standalone um, access point in its own right, but of course it can actually be used as part of a Neutron system. And if I go to a Neutron controller, which, well, I just happen to have one connected to the network now, and log into a controller, and if I go to access points, uh, that's one that I was playing around with earlier on, but you notice over here it does actually say one new access point has been detected, which is this aforementioned EWS 300 that I've actually got on the network. And if I click on add there, I won't worry about that, we'll go through that some other time with another video. Now, what it's done is it's bringing that EWS 300 under the management of the neutron controller. So um, you can actually use it, as I say, as a standalone access point or part of the Neutron system. So uh, that's it. That's the EWS 300. Thank you very much.